uh, different, you know, the whole idea is when I do these um, uh, open studios is that you see what I'm, I'm working on. And the painting that I was working on, I really have almost basically finished. And that's this one over my shoulder here. And, um, you know, I was starting a new one, but, you know, in the process of doing that, I was getting my pastels ready. And um, in the process of that, I realized, oh my gosh, I have not done my beginning of the year <laughs> uh, clean up my pastel box. So I thought that would be interesting for you to see how I do that and the process that I take because I do use color and value as my uh, premise for where the colors go. And you'll also see a little bit about how I I, I keep my pastels together for paintings that I'm working on because I usually have a couple going. At the moment, I, I don't. I've got just some, some starts. That's about it. So, but I am going to show you something first. Um, I believe it was October. Uh, I did these two uh, studies for larger pastels of the dunes. And I was using those new uh, pastels, I got them, uh, Mammut uh, pastels from Spain that I had won in our competition. And so for, uh, I did this one that's larger and the majority of the June is all with the uh, Mammut pastels. And then the greens, the violets and the blues are from another uh, box of pastels. But just so you can see how that study informed this larger painting. So rather than fooling around with colors on this, I use those little studies there as a way to uh, develop a beginner or a starter palette. So I had that initial block in. So you saw that, now you see how it's bigger. And I think I told you I wanted to go even bigger. <laughs> so this is a 12 by 18. I started for a demo for the, uh, the uh, Harwich Artist uh, Guild. And I, you know, I did have to do some finishing touches up at the end, but those color studies definitely make a difference. So bear that in mind if you're, it doesn't, I mean, you can do very quick color studies so that, you know, they're, they're not really a lot of detail, but you're just getting the color down. They can almost take on an abstract feel because you're just playing with color. And then moving on into something that's a little bit more representational if that's your style, and then, uh, you know, doing it bigger. And you could always just j dive right in and do it. You, know? you don't have to do the color studies, but I must admit for the larger ones, I find it really handy. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna switch the angle of the camera. You're not going to see me, but you're going to see um, my uh, studio pastel box. And I'll be showing you how I uh, separate, clean and sort out my pastels. Okay, so let me just do that. Ooh, that looks a little blurry. Hmm. Okay, I wonder why. Okay, hang on just a second. Sorry about this. Okay, does that look better? Yeah, yeah that's better. Good. Okay, hey, it, uh, it, tell me if it goes out of focus because sometimes when I'm working um, you know, I don't actually notice. So I wanted, and I'm hoping that my hand in front of this is not good. It doesn't look as though it's, I had it all set up before you came, the rest of you came. Uh, both Paul and Mary Jane can attest to that. I did a trial run while they, while they were here. So anyway, a couple of things that uh, I take out. One, I have a sheet of gray toned uh, paper. Uh, middle value, because if I'm testing colors, what I want to be able to do is I want to see whether they are light or dark. If I'm using a light sheet of paper, I'm not necessarily going to see my lights as clearly on a white sheet of paper. So the gray tone works well. Also, anything that's that middle value helps a lot. And I'll bring this into the frame, but I'm just going to move it out. The part that you're not going to see is just my greens at this at this end right here. Oh, I've got a green fingernail, though. <laughs> So um, you're going to see, I'm gonna start up at this end. A couple of years ago, I had, um, well, I always, every school year, I do have a, 
a high school student who is who selects to be in an art mentoring program. So, uh, you know, I've had seniors and juniors and this year I haven't met my um, student yet, but we're going to be getting together hopefully next week. So that will be fun. But one year I actually had my student come and help me do this. And boy, I'll tell you, she loved it. <laughs> she had so much fun with the colors. We brought it of the, the summertime. We took everything out into the backyard. I had a couple of tables. We set up, we were underneath the tent that I borrowed from my son and we just sorted and cleaned. And it was a good uh, process for her because one, she's working with color and two, she was uh, focusing on value. If you need it, have some sort of a color wheel. As you know, I use the Munson color wheel the majority of the time, but I do have a regular color wheel too. But it does actually help you uh, decide if you're a little bit confused about uh, you know, the colors and how to set them up. My box is set up totally uh, by color wheel and by value. Well, more or less by color wheel. I don't have a round box, but <laughs> anyway, uh, for another class, I'd actually labeled these things just so that you know people could see it. Uh, the last two years, uh, not this year, which is why I thought it would be handy to do it for the open studio. I have done something with my classes or workshop on uh, setting up your pastels freshly for the new year. So uh, you all get to experience a little bit of what goes into that. So for starters, um, I always say take wrappers off. Okay, oh, goodness me. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna turn the volume right off, down. Okay. So for starters, I do usually take the wrappers off, but I tend not to with uh, uh, Diane Townsend. And I, you know, I'm not really sure why. I think it's because they're, they're slightly special to me, but the problem with them being special and a wrapper on is, you know, I may not use them exactly right. So what I really am going to do today, these are fairly new, I am going to actually take them right out of the wrappers. So anything that's got a wrapper, but now this is what I do with wrappers. Okay, see that? Woo. The center here shows a little bit of the color, okay? The color is on the outside. I have a box here that I keep my wrappers in. So it's gonna go in there. And that way I haven't actually just thrown it out. What I've done is I've kept it, but the trick also is to make sure that was easy to do with all the gloves on both hands, I'll tell you. Is, to, is that a security blanket thing, Betsy, or would you actually like look through that entire box to find a, a, a wrapper? You know mm. what? Uh, that's a excellent question, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is it's a security. Okay. It probably Every, is. And you know what? I, I must admit, I am going to have to go through the box because I had this absolutely fabulous, very light, warm green that uh, was just beautiful and it did not look white. And I cannot find it. And I'm hoping that I have at least the wrapper so I can reorder it. It was getting kind of small. So anyway, I'm not going to take all these wrappers off. Some of the time, so, you know, while you're sitting here, gosh, that would be like really boring. But uh, you can see some of them, what I've done is the wrapper is there, but what I've uh, taken and I've cracked it and pulled out half of it. So I'm using the other half somewhere there. So those I'm gonna leave like that because that's just my reminder that this color here is somewhere in here in my pastel box that I take plein air painting or uh, you'll see the other drawer. <laughs> you'll also see how incredibly messy I am sometimes, boy, I'll tell you. These are really nice, these trays. Uh, I keep this uh, handy, really long uh, yardstick for uh, perspective. But they have, uh, I actually was uh, gifted these, which was just wonderful. But they have mesh right here. And then when you pull it out, it collects any of the dust or the small, small particles. So I would take and I would just dump them in the tray. Uh, in the trash. This is um, 
I believe she got this product through Dakota, I would imagine. I know I've seen them around places um, and they're very sturdy. The second, these middle areas is where I tend to put the pastels that are getting kind of small. But not being quite as neat as I actually want to be, things have gotten slightly um, moved around from where they belong. Not too bad, but you know, they, they need a real cleanup. So the reality of it is, is when you have your box out, and I have I have a lot of pastels, I know that. Um, truthfully, I don't need all these pastels because the reality of it is, is there's uh, certain pastels that I tend gravitate to, for certain colors I gravitate to. So every once in a while, I kind of pull out. There's a, this is a hard pastel. I use that for drawing. That's going over there for drawing. So I'm gonna just go through and just shuffle through just to make sure the hard pastels are pulled out because I really don't want them to look at my, and I love drawing with reds. So I do have quite a few new pastels and different reds. And someone was telling me that they were uh, discontinuing packaging. So I have bought myself more reds that I can draw with. So if I can't order singles, I have them. And if that information has changed, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go through them in probably a couple of years anyway. Oh, look at there's a wrapper with nothing in it. I'll go back in here. Okay, so how do I start? Okay, take out the ones that you use for drawing, put them over to the side because I'm not I'm not painting with them. And I'm strictly thinking of this as painting. Next thing you want to do is you want to think in terms of your color wheel. So I have yellow and orange right here. I have red here. Now, what I've done is I have moved some of my red violets into this section. So I have red violet, blue violet. They're somewhat kind of separated, but not really. They start out that way. Now I have blue, blue green. I have uh, no, I have blue here. This one's over here. Sorry. I have blue here, blue, green, and yellow green. And I keep my neutrals in the drawer right here. Same tray. It's just in the drawer uh, because this thing wasn't just long enough. So whatever you do, uh, if you're setting it up by the color wheel, that is a wonderful way to start and just, you know, follow, follow the color wheel. Next thing you want to do and you guys have, have heard parts of this before anyway, is these no. all go from the lightest value to the darkest value that I own, okay? So this is a wonderful way to see, and this is why you do it a couple times a year, beginning of the year, is where are the holes, okay? So let's say, well, this, I have these colors, they're just all over the place. This is why I have to clean. Okay, oh, this guy belongs here. Um, Let's move that out of the way. So what you do is look at this area here. Let's say this is all the pastels I have. I really do not have many of the middle light red violets and blue violets. So that tells me that what I need to do is in my case, replace them because they're somewhere else here. I know they are. Uh, 425. So, and just make sure you're muted out there there's somebody we can hear uh, okay let me just see if i can okay somebody is on muted. it's the person on the ipad or it's patricia holmes one or the other okay or victoria there's three people unmuted okay I see yeah there's a few of you are let me Jeez, unfortunately, I don't do this very often. I really can't remember where it is. Does anyone remember where the mute all button is? No. Okay, that's all right. Just uh, probably near, if probably everyone just part checks participants. Themselves. Pardon me. Oh, for participants. Probably on thank participants. you very much. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not there though. Click, you click, got click it. it. Yep, I got it. I clicked on. I'm. There we go, I'm muting everybody. 
Okay, so in muting you doesn't mean I don't want you to, to unmute and ask questions. I just want you to mute yourself back again. Okay. So with your past selves, even if all you have is this many or even fewer, set them up in your color wheel, light to dark. Okay. As soon as you see areas, you know, set it up in a, a regular pastel box or, uh, you know, say, I, I like using these um, uh, takeaway containers so that I can put the pastels. So you could have your pastels set up like that, but you're breaking them up. So you're distinctly following that color wheel and that you're having your colors in individual sections or boxes for each of them. Now, in doing that, the next step is, is you want to make sure you go from light to dark, okay? Just to refresh you there on what I just got finished saying. So what happens is, is the holes tell you where you need to replace. So you got a gift certificate for Dakota and you wanna buy some pastels. This tells you I need this value and these two colors, warm violet, red violet, because I don't have very many. I don't need many. I don't need any more light value of either of those. My middle value looks pretty good. And I'm pretty low on the dark values back here. And this one actually looks more like it's a blue. Okay, so I slipped them over there. There, now those look violet. Okay, so what happens is, is now I know what I'm gonna spend my gift certificate on if I were you, <laughs> okay? So now I have this color, okay? It's a little, it's small. Clearly I like it because it is so small. I use Swiffers, okay? I have two different kinds. I have the flat kind and I have the fluffy, fluffy kind. I'm gonna give it a nice clean. I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm gonna use this one from now. Okay, so I am not going to break mine uh, totally up into, sorry, let me turn it like this, to the color wheel, but I'm going to just ad lib it. But what you could do is you could have your yellows, your oranges, your reds, your violets, your blues, and your greens. I'm going to take, I know this is a red violet. I'm gonna put it here. I know it's dark. So low numbers, dark, but here we go. I have to follow what I'm doing. Okay, I can see that that's really a violet. Okay, let's say I wasn't sure what color that was. Put it on that gray tone, I've got it. Goes in here, I know I'm right. Let's take this one. This one's in here. I can see it's wrong. I'm gonna use this as an example. Okay, I'm checking to see if this is a violet. I'm gonna put it here next to the violet. Not even the right, okay, not even close. That's a blue. You can't tell by looking at a pastel stick sometimes what color it is. Let's take and clean it. This is a very hard pastel. I have no clue what it is. It's got a label on it that doesn't even look familiar. I probably, sometimes I have people just, you know, give me pastels. This is a very hard pastel. Okay, you know what I would do with this hard pastel? I'm gonna put this to the side. I don't use a lot of hard pastels. Um, I'm gonna put it in this box over here. So I have my uh, hard pastels in this box and I have my, um, new pastels in that box. And hard pastel, even though I don't know the name of it, I can just tell that it's hard. So there we go. So I'm doing this. Okay, look at this guy doesn't belong in here. He's a light blue. Here's my blue, putting it here. That says it's cool blue there. Perfect. I have tons of boxes that I have labels in here. So this label, is Eli in the woods. So I know exactly what painting that is. I'm totally finished with that painting. Don't need the paper clip in there either. Holy moly. That will go on the tray. Okay, hard pastels, they go right here. Okay, another paper clip. There we go, get that out of the way. So now what I have is I have this selection of very dirty pastels. Two ways I could do it. One, I can hand clean them and then I can put them where they belong. Two, I could pull out my cherry um, pastel cleaner, which I'll show you, you know, in a little bit. But because I know I have to sort the whole thing, I'm going to go through here and I'm going to 
actually put these exactly where they belong. So I've got a dark violet. Okay, I'm going to try to figure out where these different ones go. Another hard pastel, put it over here. Let's pull in more of these hard pastels out of here. If you're not sure if a pastel is hard or soft, one you can, and I, you know, I know this is maybe repetitive for some people, but I do have uh, you know people that join that haven't been to some of them before. So I do a little bit of repeating. Okay, this one here, you can see, look at how, I'm not even pressing down. If I just let it roll in my hand, the pastel comes off. A light touch, the pastel comes off. That's a soft pastel. That is a bluish green. Not sure which kind of green it is. You can just put it down here. It's a dark one. Okay, dark pastel. But how do I know if it's a bluish green or it is a, a warm green, a yellow green? Well, we find a green that is, let's put that green next to it. When we can see a value change, Okay, we can see some green there. It's pretty dull, but we can definitely see that there's a green. Let's get one that's a little bit darker. Okay. Okay, still, yep, that still feels like it's green. Now to compare that, just in case some of you were thinking that it might've been a blue, <laughs> it's gonna take a darker blue. Remember the light one, I see a value shift but I don't really see the color quite as well. Here, it's a little darker, even though it's not as dark as that. I can see the green here. It's not bright, I can see it. Now I'm gonna take a dark blue, the one where I can actually see the blue. And if I look there, wow, that's looking even more gray there, isn't it? But to me, it still has that feeling of a blue, but I would not say this feels as though it has blue in it. Because all these dark, especially dark neutral colors, neutral meaning that there is a color in there. It's not made out of black and white. It's made out of colors of darker values. And by putting the colors next to it, it can help you find it. A lot of this is a, um, a lot of trial and error. It's also um, training your eye to see the color. Um, I can see them pretty clearly. Let me put this down right here. That was in there. And I'm going to take a, let's see if this is a darker green. Okay, this is an even darker green. Okay, and even that darker green, it's still feeling like, well, you know what? It's feeling very bluey green, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's your more, a closer to a truer green. It's really not feeling blue. So let's try to find one that is a bluish green, a dark bluish green. Let's test this. Oh, there's a dark bluish green. Right in between those two. Okay, look at how. Never blow on it, tap it into something. Okay, let me put it in the middle of here. That looks That's like it's a dark, it. dull green. Dark dull green. But see, if that board is soft enough to take a push pin, would you actually paint on it or is it too squishy feeling underneath? This here? Yeah. Do you mean uh, paint as in? Um, like if you would you actually do a pest, like put a piece of UART and do a pastel on it or is it too too yielding underneath? If it's soft enough to get stick a push pin into that. Oh, you know what? This is the only thing I ever use. Oh, okay. So the, yep. the answer is yes. I only use this is this is just black, uh, oh. mat, uh, um, foam cord. Okay. I buy it in bulk, and I do like it because it does have a little bit of a give. Okay. I think some people like it where it's very rigid. You know, you could use those masonite uh, drawing, um, okay. yep. uh, pads, uh, drawing tables. Uh, yeah. But this, yeah, this works out fine. So just by trial and error, I go in there and I say, okay, this green, this green's really a bluey green. Oh, okay, this is my life, seriously. Well, I don't know what happened to the original color because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing with it. So it's here somewhere, but it, I've discovered it is what I thought it was a bluish green just by testing it out right here. Okay, so this box that I have, 
really needs to be cleaned up. So I can go through here. Here's another one, look at this. See, some of these aren't gonna to be too straightforward. Okay, let me turn it around like this so you can see this. Okay, this one to me feels like it has a little bit of yellow in it. So I'm gonna put it here and it's light. So I'm gonna put it down at this end. Wow. Okay, that's definitely, that's definitely a yellow, but that is a very dull yellow. What would make a yellow dull? Light. Whatever is opposite on the color wheel. Purple. Yeah, on the color wheel, you could. It doesn't feel like it has violet in it, but absolutely it could. What's uh, anyone else have an idea of what could make this look so dull? Well, could it could have some white in it? Too much white. It could have too much white in it. It is very light, and don't forget, the lighter you go with colors, the duller the intensity goes. So, for instance, could it have some a little bit of orange in it? It, I don't know. Look yeah. at this. There's yellow next to it. Uh -huh. Okay. So mm -hmm. this one's still in the yellow yellow vein. I have no idea what they've mixed it, but this is definitely not any one of these other colors. Because remember, it's total color wheel. So even if you can't identify exactly what's in it um, that made it dull, we know that it still falls in that yellow zone. And I'll pull up. So this one's going to go over here and it's light. So it's going right in the center. Uh, I'm going to see if I have. Okay, here's one. Well, this might not be that all that difficult anyway. Here's a here's one here, another dark. Okay, I feel like it's an orange. Some people would call it brown, but to me it really has an orange. And I'm looking at the screen and it feels as though the screen is very similar to what I have here. And it's definitely got the orange. I hold this up and I look at it, you know, some people could say brown, unless a brown has a color to it, okay? So that yellow is going to go there, and that orange is going to go there, it's going the dark, and I remember I put my orange and my yellow together, so that's not super dark. Remember, yellows are never going to go as dark as your blues and your greens. So that's going to go probably right there for the time being. I'm going through like here. Okay, let's try let's try another another one here. I go through. Okay, yellow or I mean green or blue. Blue. Okay, definitely whoops. Definitely blue. Light blue. Put it at the wrong end. That's all right. Light blue. I'm gonna go there. So you just keep uh checking them out. If you're not uh that's a warm blue. This is cool blues right here. So there we go. So I'm going to just darks. Here we are. There are no blacks in here. Okay. I do not have black on my table. And you all know, because I told you that I took all my pure whites and I moved them into the drawers. So this here, really dark. Can we really tell what it is? Well, you can tell what it's not. Okay. It's definitely not one of the warmer colors. It does not look like it is a yellow, orange, don't think it's a red. Maybe it's a violet, blue, or green. So let's just put it down here. We don't know what it is. So let's just put it right here in the oh, violets. Take a little smear of that. Wow, Ooh, that's really super dark. Got to do the same sort of thing. Got to get take a dark blue. I'm gonna take next to it. Oh, that's a dark blue. Gosh, you know what? Maybe this is a dark blue violet. Ah, that might be a dark blue violet. Here's a dark red violet. Okay, slightly lighter so I can see the difference. That's a blue violet. Okay, that's a dark blue violet. So that's going to go on my dark blue violets right back here. So I haven't filled this end in, but at least I found a few more on this side here. So that's the process that I would take. I would just keep going through here. Uh, clearly, I'm talking through this. so. Um, I am doing a lot. Uh, I do usually do this a lot quicker. And because I know I have to actually take and um, clean out everything, I am going to use the uh, pastel cleaner, blue green, after I have refilled my uh, 
Betsy, are you also kind of taking this opportunity to do kind of dust control? Because I would imagine like all those dividers and everything, there's, you know, there's got to be a fair amount of dust. Yes, there there is a fair amount of dust. Uh, I, I, I go, I have- um, I have a filter. Yeah, I have a filter. I just don't have it on when I'm uh, when I'm doing this. I usually have it on. Look at that okay. color. Is that gorgeous? Who would have known wow. it was so pretty with all that uh, dust on it? Let's see what this color looks like. This is why you have to clean them. Look at that. It's gorgeous. You know, I might have just totally overlooked it. Here's another really dirty one. Look at that. It, actually, it looked green there. So you give them a really good, uh, really good clean first. So yes, what uh, two things? That's a violet. Uh, so two things that I do. One, um, yes, these get cleaned pretty regularly. Last time I did this was probably three or four months ago, which, you know, is two, and I've done a lot of painting. So you can see in here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine boxes that are, oh, you, yeah, you can see a little bit in the down on the bottom. I have nine of these boxes that uh, tell me what, well, they don't tell me what it is. It means I've, st I've done with the painting and I've just started jumping things back in here. But this is why this drawer stays right below it because then I can refill as I need to. And um, that was there, that's there, go through here, red violet. Hey, Betsy? Oh, I, yeah. That's when you use the, the cherry cleaner to do the cleaning for the pastels, can you mix the colors in that? I mean, the light to values, I should say, from light to dark in there, or, or is it better to put all lights in at the same time, or I don't know. You know what? I have not found that it is uh, an issue at all, Put just dumping a whole load in there of different okay. colors. Uh, and I'll, I'll pull that up. I took it out. I keep it, I keep it nearby so that I use it frequently. I am not going to turn it on, but I'm going to show you guys what it is. And let me, do they have their name? Oh, yeah, they do have their name on it. I'll turn that around so you can see the, the name. It's a Cherry Art product. It's a pastel cleaner, which is cherryartproducts.com. What happens is, is you take, oh, geez, I have to go up even higher. Wait a second. Let me go down. Didn't think about that part. Okay. Yeah, let me just do this here. Okay, take the top off. Inside of here are grids, okay? Which I did find up here. <laughs> I wasn't so sure, but they say to only use grits, nothing else. Okay. Don't, you don't use cornmeal, use grits. So this here is filled with grits. This works like the uh, tumblers that, you know, when you were a kid, you took a rock and you're going to turn it into a gem. And five years later, it became a gem. <laughs> but anyway, what this does is it slowly rotates round. Your pastels move within this grit. And when you get finished, you use, um, okay, I'm not actually sure what it is, but I just have one of those slotted spoons and I use a slotted spoon and I shake the uh, grit out and I have clean pastels. Now, normally I would just do it and put them back, but because I have not been very good about putting any of these things away down here, I'm going to have to put them in and then I'm gonna to have to clean each row because then everything's gonna need it. There's no sense in taking, putting this on, putting clean things, putting them in there with other things that are already dirty. You know, it's just not, it's not worth it. It's going to be a mess. So this is very good. I know a few of you have them and I know a few people bought them and then they wound up either not liking it, not using it or whatever. Uh, but, you know, my guess is you would readily be able to sell yours <laughs> because I'll tell you, they save a whole load of time. So rather than me standing here with my uh, Swiffer, I can actually do a whole bucket of them. And when I say a bucket of them, I'd say maybe about, uh, well, depending on the size that will make a difference, but here, let me show you. I could do this amount easily. 
in that uh, in that uh, cherry cleaner. That wouldn't be a problem at all. And I would put them in. It wouldn't make any difference. Now, I must say something as light as this rolling around in there, this may not come out quite as clean as I would want it, but it would be clean enough that a quick, quick little wipe of my Swiffer and it would be fine. So I, so I really don't separate them. And it collects all your little tiny pieces too. So that, whoops, so that is, that is really the, one of the highlights of the new year for me. New year and summer, I always do this. And then I uh, randomly during the year when things are looking bad, but you know, November and December were way too busy. So I actually never wound up doing it. Uh, your questions on the color. Um, did people um, get a good base for how you wind up setting up whatever size you have? You could have one box, one small box, and you could do the exact same thing. Okay, so this is a new box. Okay, so you could just do this. First of all, you take off all those wrappers, but isn't that pretty? This is. Um, Jack Richardson, soft pastels, furs and feathers. But whoa, look at those colors. So let's say this is the only box you had. First thing I would do is, well, actually this one is set up really pretty good because look at what this is. This is set up from muted or dull colors to colors that have a little bit more intensity to them up here, okay? But regardless, okay, here we've got greens, Blue greens, blue, I would still, in my own mind, I would still go through and I would just reorganize these so that I could see them in a look like this here. Look at that. There's your, your oranges right here. This guy's just checking him. Yeah, he's more orange than red. I would get all my oranges together and I would put this in, this, in the box together, okay? That's what that would be my suggestion. Even even the new ones, just take them out. Muted, okay. That's a muted orange. Okay, is it lighter than darker than that? Okay. Reality of it is, we can take the stick and we can put it up to it. We can see one looks a little darker than the other. I would still suggest that you take that gray tone paper and put it down because ever so slightly, but it is lighter. It does make a difference. Look at this one here. Ooh, is that a yellow or is it an orange? Okay, that could be a really dark yellow, but it's feeling as if it's slightly orangey. So that one I'm going to put to the side because I'm not sure about that one. I'd have to play around with it. There's no, interesting, there's no yellows in this. I've got some yellow greens. So I would take, I would just reorganize this whole box so that I had my yellow, my orange, my um, reds, my violets, and my blues, and my greens. And then I would be able to see which ones were light, which ones were dark, and I could set them, at, set them up. So you do not have to have a whole load of pastels in order to do this. You can, you can have 20 of them, and you can still do this. Questions on... Um, yeah, pastels, um, cleaning your pastels, organizing your pastels. Betsy, it's Mary Jane. Um, the trays underneath that catch all the dust. At one time, you showed me that you might make your own stick from all the extra dust. Oh, yes, yes, I do. I do have these guys somewhere here. Yes, because you can. That would be fun to show you guys how to do. That is really all those uh, su supplies are in another closet. But you have a mortar and pestle. You save all those little, oh, well, here you go. Uh, some, there you go. Okay, some of these are a little large, but this is a, another container. I didn't throw any of these guys out. Well, that guy shouldn't be in here. He's still got a couple of them in here that are too big. So we'd sort those out. Got lots of little tiny pieces here. Some people take and they have like little jars. I started that, you know, and I'm not not that organized to stick with it. I'm I'm better off doing this. So I would separate my oranges and my reds, and I would same thing as we were doing there. I would separate all these little pieces, put them in piles, and I could turn them into a pastel that's used totally usable. 
if you wanted to change your pastels, let's say I could take my uh, little bit of reddish orange here that I have, I can get all my uh, these colors together. Glad you lost that in there, Jan. Let's put that there. Get all these together. And I said, oh, geez, but I want it to be a little bit lighter. Okay, so I'm going to put in a couple of light colors. I'm not going to put the light blue in. What would happen if I start? This is a yellowy. What would happen if I started putting light blue in with my orange? Think of your color wheel. You'll get more of a brown color, um, uh, uh, a grayish. It'll yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna dull it down, even if it's a light blue. Okay, if I put it in here, if there's enough of that quantity, and you can see that that is blue compared to this one being more of a yellow. Oops, more of a yellow color. If I put too much of that blue in there, what will happen is these oranges, the opposite of orange is blue. Blue will start to neutralize it, turn it more towards your, uh, your um, gray. Some people use the word gray. Um, I tend to use the word neutral. And um, because it's light, it would be a light muted orange, okay? But if I don't put the blue in, I would have a light muted orange. What did I just get finished saying? That doesn't make sense. Oh, right. Muted in terms of its intensity. I shouldn't have used that word. I should have said neutral. Sorry about that. So you could go through all these and pick them apart. You know, if you wanted to stay darker, I can just put them in. I've got some reds in here too. I can put some reds in. It's part of the color wheel. We look at that red and yellow, make the orange. I'm still trying to make orange here. I want to come up with some fun colors. Look at all these little things. Oop, this one's got a greenish look to it. That's gonna dull it out too. Okay. Now from here, same thing. I could clean these first. I probably wouldn't because they're just so small. It would be hard to, um, uh, you know, filter them through the grit without it really taking a laborious amount of time. Just going to move this up and just want to check in. And, and reality of it is, is that's a really, really nice project to do, especially, you know, in the wintertime where we're inside a little bit more, you know, we've got, um, we were talking about plans for the new year, you know, uh, commitment, uh, making a resolution, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you think of for the new year, one of the things you can do is think of just sorting off those pastels. And I know people that have done it in the past have found it helpful in terms of identifying, you know, what you have all of a sudden, it's like, oh, where did you get all these yellows? I mean, you know, do you really need all those yellows? Pack them away, put them someplace else, then you can pull them out later. And that's what I use for these drawers, drawers for too, is I have backup colors that are in there so that when I do wind up seeing the holes, I can fill them. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful. Does anyone have any specific questions about, um, you one know, of the things style, that, oh, setting them up, colors, values? One of the things that's helped me, I my pastels are very organized. I have rows of Highland boxes, but I have that like super bright light. It's called a daylight light and it shines on my boxes and I find it easier to see what I'm looking for when there's a fair amount of light on the pastel. Right. You know, because then I'm like, oh, okay. If it's not light enough in my studio, it can be hard to, you know, find. Well, things. that's a good point. It is a good point. And I I do have a, 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 a light here uh, that is a warm, cool light. So yeah, I have that. Yeah, hopefully not, not, you know, making, uh, you know, changing. Ideally, this would be the sort of thing you could do in uh, daylight. And this window here gets a lot of sun. As some of you, yeah, I don't have any, uh, <laughs> It comes in when yeah. I don't want it to sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, make sure your lighting is good um, with that. And again, you know, you'd really do not need a lot of pastels to do this. And you will notice a huge difference in your selection that you have in terms of you know the holes that you have, where you need to get more either color or value. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is you'll start to use colors a little bit differently because you've set them up in terms of, you know, that value and that color in the color wheel. 
And then when you're choosing colors, you can choose them a little bit more based on, you know, whether they're light or dark, whether you want something that's bright or you want something that's dull. And by laying them out like this, you're able to see that a lot easier. I know sometimes people, and I mean, clearly I just showed you a new box I have that's in the drawer, but I, um, I a long time ago stopped using pastels out of the box. I do have one box that comes with me for plein air because I'm uh, using up colors that I have. And rather than shoving them in my box, I take this one other box with me. But if you've, if you've got like a whole series of boxes, it's really hard to do. <laughs> and I know some people don't want to do it. They like keeping like all their Terry Ludwigs in one box and their unisons in another box and, you know, uh, wh whatever other pastels you have, your Mount Visions. And that's okay. But if it's a pastel you're, you are going to use a lot, get it out there. Because if it's in the box somewhere, you may not notice it. Uh, you may not think about it, you know, and if you're staring at you when you go to use your pastels, you're more apt to use those colors. Now, um, another thing to think about, if you do have a, <clears throat> let's say, open pastels like this, what I do is I went to the Christmas tree shop uh, and bought, uh, you know, those plastic summer, um, well, you can buy them anywhere, uh, picnic table covers. And I lay this over the top of it. That also helps keep the, the dust down. And Lisa had mentioned that earlier about the dust. And I do usually have my, well, I'll definitely have my purifier on when I continue cleaning here. Um, any other questions, comments? Okay, well, I was gonna just show you a little bit about what I was doing in the studio. And I think I had mentioned, I'm just gonna swing that this way a little bit. I'm working a little bit on, and I'll just bring this in so that we can um, move in just a little bit. Now I can. I find that the discipline of cleaning and putting away pastels after I've finished a major project to be helpful because it kind of, it's like eating sherbet, you know, it clean, cleanses the palate. And, you know, it's more important than I thought because I find if I leave them out, you know, it's just like energetically you get kind of dragged down. So like if I finish something, I clean them, I put them away. Now, sometimes I'll leave them out for three or four paintings. And I that way I can kind of work with the same group of pastels with maybe three completely different oh, yeah. paintings. But then I'm like, okay, now I'm done. Clean them, put them away. Yeah, ready absolutely. to start again. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, and that, and, the, uh, and I sh should have mentioned too, I have some boxes that actually just say, okay, so this one says, um, dunes so i know this this is not going back in there i'm using this for dunes because i know i'm going to be painting more you know my uh buoy series um you know the water series you know those colors really do stay together now i know i have enough pastels that it's not going to interfere with my uh studio box or my plein air box and they can just stay like that because i have enough if i didn't have enough what I would suggest, uh, let me get one of these down here. I think I've showed this to you before. Okay. You can make, this is in plastic, so it doesn't go all over the place. So this was a couple of different paintings. Oh, oh, huh, I forgot about this. When I was painting motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> these, were, these, were the, uh, these were the colors I used for the uh, motorcycles. So uh, the, the colors needed to go back in their, their box. So what happened was, is, you know, same gray tone paper, uh, you know, different brand. Uh, this is the, the Moonstone by Canson. If I'm making a color study, I must admit, I do like that Moonstone by Canson. And I put it in a plastic sleeve so that it wouldn't uh, get smeared. So now I know uh, if I ever... <laughs> Paint motorcycles again. <laughs> that is the uh, color. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have another one here. Some of these are other things. So nope, that's it. But I do that for several things where I keep the uh, you know the colors so that they're uh, you know together in a palette, and it's it's really super helpful. And I know I've showed you in my uh, uh, sketchbook. You know I keep the strip that I test colors on right next to the photograph and whatever sketches 
so that I've got that too. So let's say something happens and I did smear a painting or dropped a painting or something happened and I needed to touch it up. I've got my little uh, strip with the colors that I use because I made little tick marks before I painted. And then that way I can go back in and I can, um, you know, fix the painting if something has happened. Or maybe I've looked at it after a little while and I thought, oh, geez, you know, I really should do something else with that. You know, and I know what colors I used. So I just a recommendation, nice way to start the year, you know, give your pastels a nice little brush off. It gets really kind of exciting, too, because then you start you know, thinking of, you know, the different paintings that you can do and what's, you know, what's floating around their ideas and, oh, geez, these colors remind me of something. And that may spur you on to paint, starting with the idea of these, these colors that you're uh, cleaning really could make a great painting. So any other questions? Let's see, it's yeah. Deborah. Is that your painting behind you? Of course it is. Yes, the yes, flower. yes. So I'm doing, uh, I've been doing some, uh, something a little bit different for myself. And uh -huh. this is um, still life. And yeah. I was doing it with a, a couple of my classes and I'll be doing some interior scenes too. So, and it's that idea of light and shadow, really trying to get that real strong light that's coming in on something and creating a shadow. So, you know, and I just, I, I like the, juxtaposition of this very light and airy beautiful flowers with these and this mantle had these just they were very plain boxes on the mantle so what I had done is I took some of the colors that were up here and I kind of skimmed them over there I nice. I did take some of the other things off the mantle it had a whole lot of different things on it but I did like that idea mm -hmm. what it's going for I have the shade, the shadow that's coming in here. I've got this that's paralleling it. And then the steps are bringing you back down. So this was really very much of a designerly uh, a design tool that I was using mm -hmm. to try to keep, keep the viewer back in. And I did like the way it kind of created this. We were talking about circular compositions and I wouldn't necessarily say it's circular, but you do actually move around the outside of this painting. And the shadow I was having a blast with, to tell you the truth, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> nice. What size is it? That, I believe it's an 11 by 14. I think that's what it is. You know, I know it was, uh, I don't think it's a 12 by 16. I think it's an 11 by 14. And that's on, that's on pastel, that's on pastel mat. Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah. Nice, really nice. So I've got, um, I, you know, I, I, in my newsletter, I'd said I've got a couple of things going on. One, there's a pop-up coming up. The information on that's going to be coming out uh, probably over the weekend. It's going to be uh, two weeks from uh, today. And that is going to be a simple still life uh, either a jar, a vase, uh, something with a, a small quantity of flowers. I highly doubt it's going to be one flower. It's probably going to be a couple of flowers. Um, so I'll be taking the photographs this weekend and sending that out. And the other thing that I've got going, which is new, uh, you know, I had a couple of people ask me about, uh, you know, the uh, artist plan that I have and some of the organizing and how do I keep myself organized and you can see my brain I think keeps more organized than the physical stuff so the cleaning I am organized I mean I have, they're all in color and value they're just a little messy <laughs> so anyway I have this um, uh, artist plan uh, workshop that I've taught I've taught it in a couple of my classes uh, and I've actually morphed it because I felt as if when I did that workshop and the classes the classes are slightly different because i see people but we've got other things we're doing we're not just doing the artist plan so i've set it up so that it is a workshop it starts in january it follows over a, a, about a three-month period and what happens is, is we have two sessions that we're meeting as a group via zoom one of them is two hours and one of them is one hours and then there's three sessions that are private coaching and the idea of what it is, is to help you identify 
what it is you want to do with your art. And I have different uh, tools, organizers, exercises, uh, suggestions for calendar dates. Some of you have taken this uh, already mm -hmm. with me. Um, it's slightly different, but if you took it again, some of it would be repetitive. Uh, some of you might think something repetitive may help. <laughs> you know, some of you may not be interested in that part. But, um, you know, it's uh, uh, very personal, which is why I am teaching it as a group for a start. Then we're going to do a group so that we can share ideas, suggestions, questions. Sometimes people ask a question and you might not have thought of it. And it's like, that was a really good question. So partway through, we're going to have a, a, a one hour group meeting where we're, we're going to you know, share thoughts in a question and answer. And then the private sessions really are designed to help you set up some sort of plan for what is it you want to do with your art. And that revolves around your, your intentions, that more personal side of your art. Uh, and it has to do with your the techniques that you're going to be using, whether it's, you know, materials or different, um, uh, you know, ways that you can apply the pastel, what can you use the pastel with, and then it's really going to be, a lot of it is how do you organize your time so that you're actually following through with some of these ideas. And because it's individualized, because I've broken part of it away from the group, is that you know, if you work full time and you only have, you know, two or three hours a week, maybe not even that, then your plan looks different from somebody who maybe has the ability to do something, you know, as many times during the week as that they're available for. So by having it as I, you know, I toyed with whether it's mentoring and coaching, but mentoring really, um, I didn't feel as if it was total mentoring because I'm giving a lot of direction and a lot of information. And then you're actually bringing the mentorship part probably is more the individual time, whereas the, the group time is really more coaching where I'm, I'm giving everyone a, a, you know, same level starting point. So that is due to start at the end of January, but I only want to do it with a small group. So it uh, minimum I need to have is uh, three and the maximum that's going to be in the group is going to be six, possibly seven, but no more than that. So it will be small. So you'll get information on that too, if you're interested. And I know a few of you, a few of you have already asked a couple of questions. So hopefully that little summary helped um, answer questions, but does anyone have anything about the pop-ups or I'm, my shirts, I'm getting it really dirty here, <laughs> uh, about the pop-ups, uh, paint, paint alongs or the uh, coaching workshop? I'm, I'm definitely interested in the coaching. Um, okay. I'm loving the pop-ups and I learn a lot from them, but I also learn a lot from your studio visits. So thank you. Oh, good. Well, yeah, you know, in the studio visits, it's, you know, they're, they're catch as you can, you know, whatever's going on here, uh, you know, and it is, a, it's, a, it's a good way to share tidbits and give a little bit of advice, you know, where some of you may actually already know some of this, but, you know, others, it's brand new. Anything? Yeah, I love the pop ups and I love the studio. Great. They're great, so great. helpful, yeah. Betsy. Wonderful. Yeah, the pop ups are a lot of fun, you know, I must admit, and it's a little different with the paint along because I can paint and teach at the same time and everybody's working on it and it's wonderful seeing the different renditions people do of the actually the same photograph, which is good. I also like the pop ups. They're wonderful. Oh, good, yeah. good. Yeah, thank you. The pop ups are great because they force me to do something within that limited time frame. Yes. You know, I've heard that from and, other people. And too. finish a painting. I'm far more likely to do an hour and then an hour the next day, an hour the next day kind of thing. But if I'm sitting here for two hours and my goal is to finish that painting, that's a very different experience for me. Yeah. And I'm generally happy, happier with the results. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good to, good to know that. But it is, I've heard that from other people that, you know, uh, you know, comments, everything from, you know, my mind went blank. I just do what you told me to, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So everything just was, you know, spontaneous in terms of using the wrong uh, pastels, changing the design around. 
but uh, you know, the rest of it is just like, okay, we're doing dark values. They're just, you know, everybody's just doing the same thing. So yeah, that is good, good. Yeah, you can learn a lot by, uh, you mm -hmm. know, either copy or uh, through the paint alongs, definitely. Good. Okay. Is that it then? Yeah, thanks, Betsy. Okay. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Yep, I'll we'll have one in time. February. So you'll uh, you'll get a notice and the other information will be uh, you know, coming you, out. Thank okay, you. terrific. Okay. Happy New Year. Okay. Thanks so, so much, much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.